There were talks you... about uh, Top Gun 2. Has anyone approached you? No one that's writing the checks. No. Uh, I Would have... you do it again? Sure. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Val Kilmer, a name closely tied to unforgettable movies like Willow, Top Gun and Tombstone, has led a life as intricate and filled with challenges away from the camera as the characters he's played on screen. His story is one of remarkable success and personal battles, depicting a man who has tread through the ups and downs of both the glitz of Hollywood and the complexities of life. Once fans had come to learn the tragic story of Val Kilmer, they were truly heartbroken. Kilmer's story began in Los Angeles, a city as famous for its sparkle and allure as it is for intensifying personal hardships. Born to Eugene, a prosperous distributor of aerospace equipment, and Gladys, a real estate developer, Kilmer grew up in a world of wealth. Yet this world of privilege couldn't protect him from life's starker aspects. At just nine years old, Kilmer faced the difficult reality of his parents' divorce. This event marked a significant turn in his life, leading him to live with his father and his brothers, Mark and Wesley, the eldest and youngest respectively. The split of his parents had a profound impact on Kilmer. He recalls this time as filled with emotional upheaval, a period when he turned more inward and became less extroverted. His bond with his father became tense, marred by misunderstandings and unexpressed resentments. This strain in their relationship lingered into his adulthood, affecting how he interacted with his father. Adding to the complexity of his family life was the passing of his father in 1995. This loss triggered a bitter legal battle with his brother Mark over their inheritance. The disagreement was so severe that it deeply affected their relationship. The media spotlight shone on these family disputes, especially when Mark Kilmer expressed to People magazine in 1996 how Val's life lacked a model for healthy relationships, reflecting on the emotional wounds rooted in their family's past. In the midst of these familial trials, Kilmer discovered comfort and direction in his love for acting. His natural aptitude for the craft was apparent from an early age, leading to his remarkable admission into the renowned Juilliard School in New York City at the young age of 16. Juilliard, famed for its intensive training and producing notable graduates, represented a pivotal moment in Kilmer's life. It provided a means for him to channel his creative energy and emotional depth into a promising acting career. But as Kilmer was poised to embark on this exhilarating new phase, a heart-rending tragedy occurred. His beloved younger brother, Wesley, to whom he was extremely close, passed away. Wesley, who was aspiring to become a director and showed promise akin to greats like Steven Spielberg or George Lucas, was a source of immense pride and inspiration for Val. He didn't just see Wesley as a brother, but as a beacon of artistic genius. The sudden loss of Wesley profoundly affected Kilmer. This tragedy imprinted a lasting mark on him, influencing his views on life, mortality, success and failure. As he began his time at Juilliard and later stepped into the Hollywood limelight, Wesley's memory continued to be a significant influence. It served as a poignant reminder of life's fleeting nature and the importance of passionately chasing one's aspirations. Thus. Kilmer's early years were woven with a mix of elements, privilege juxtaposed with loss, high aspirations amid deep sorrow, and familial connections riddled with strife. These varied experiences, both challenging and enriching, shaped his early life. Val Kilmer's life, a rich tapestry of highs and lows, took a poignant turn in his earlier years. The passing of his younger brother Wesley in a tragic accident stands as a pivotal moment in his life story. Wesley's life was cut short due to an epileptic seizure that led to a tragic event in their family swimming pool. This heartbreak had a profound effect on Val, something he later shared in an interview with the New York Times. He disclosed how it took years to process his brother's death, drawing a parallel to the emotive lyrics of a Nickelback song I'm sick of sight without the sense of feeling. This line eloquently echoed his detachment and struggle to cope with his deep sorrow. In a touching tribute on Instagram in 2019, Kilmer remembered Wesley, 
He shared a childhood photo of the three brothers with a caption that spoke volumes of his enduring love and admiration for them, calling them perfect. This post was a testament to the strong emotional ties and cherished memories he had with his siblings, despite the shadow of tragedy that loomed over them. Kilmer's tenure at the prestigious Juilliard School was a period of internal struggle. While he found success there, it came with a sense of dissatisfaction with the school's environment. He often felt at odds with the strict regulations and the authoritative nature of the institution. He also questioned some of the educational methods, which he found somewhat illogical and hard to reconcile with his own approach to acting. This period was marked by a balancing act between embracing the rigorous training and grappling with his own artistic identity. Kilmer's journey in the world of theatre, despite numerous hurdles, showcased his exceptional talent. He landed major roles in various stage productions and even collaborated with his peers to write a play titled How It All Began. This creative endeavor caught the eye of the esteemed theater producer, Joseph Papp, who was so impressed that he decided to feature it at the Public Theater in New York for an entire month. Kilmer's path in theater included a stint in Slab Boys, but it wasn't without its challenges. Initially cast in the role, he was subsequently replaced by Kevin Bacon and then by Sean Penn, experiences that likely fueled his ambition and tenacity. His theatre journey also led him to Minneapolis, where he performed in Shakespeare's As You Like It, sharing the stage with the renowned Tony Award winner Patti Lupone. However, despite these notable achievements, Kilmer harboured a sense of dissatisfaction. In a 2004 interview with The Telegraph, he expressed this feeling, describing himself as a character actor confined within the appearance of a leading man. This combination of his striking looks and internal strife made Kilmer a perfect fit for the role of Jim Morrison in the 1991 Oliver Stone biopic, The Doors. The film, charting Morrison's swift rise to stardom and his subsequent fall into drug abuse and early demise, offered Kilmer a role that resonated deeply with his own life experiences. His portrayal of Morrison was more than an acting gig. It became a reflection of his personal struggles and the intricate emotions he had been wrestling with since his early years. Kilmer's early career was marked by a series of professional successes and personal challenges. From the deep loss of his younger brother to the various milestones and hurdles in his acting career, his path illustrates a relentless quest for artistic fulfillment, often shadowed by the personal difficulties he faced. Val Kilmer's enactment of Jim Morrison in The Doors, directed by Oliver Stone, earned him wide acclaim for its authenticity. Yet this role also signaled the start of a more contentious period in his career, leading to his reputation as a challenging actor to work with. During the filming of The Doors, Kilmer's deep commitment to his character led to several disagreements with Stone. In a 2005 interview with Esquire, Stone diplomatically noted that Kilmer often spoke from a profound internal place, perhaps not fully aware of how his remarks could be interpreted by others. This intensity, although key to his riveting portrayal, occasionally put him at odds with colleagues. One notable controversy involved actress Caitlin O'Heaney, who claimed that Kilmer had been physically aggressive with her during an audition for The Doors. O'Heaney shared with BuzzFeed in 2017 that she felt Kilmer had shaken her and thrown her to the ground. Following this incident, she filed a police report alleging battery and later received a settlement of $24,500. On the other hand, Risa Bremen Garcia, the film's casting director, offered an alternate view, suggesting that the physical nature of the audition scene might have been misinterpreted. She indicated to BuzzFeed that it was a moment of intensity that could have been misunderstood as an intentional act of aggression. Kilmer's career trajectory continued its upward climb in the early 1990s, marked by a series of critically lauded performances. In 1993, he took on the role of the astute Doc Holliday in the film Tombstone, showcasing his versatility as an actor. 
In the realm of westerns, Kilmer's portrayal in Tombstone remains renowned for its charm and nuanced performance. He then featured in the 1995 hit Heat, playing a crucial role in the crime thriller, a movie often praised as a masterpiece of its kind. A serendipitous moment led to Kilmer being cast as Batman in the 1995 film Batman Forever. Interestingly, he received the offer while exploring a Batcave, stepping into the role after Michael Keaton's exit. He brought his own unique flair to the iconic superhero. The film was a commercial hit, yet Kilmer's experience during filming was fraught with challenges. Joel Schumacher, the director, openly spoke about the difficulties of working with him. Kilmer's career during this period was a blend of notable achievements and personal challenges. His deep immersion in his roles was evident, but this intensity occasionally resulted in strained working relationships and controversies. His performances in both Tombstone and Heat were testimonies to his wide-ranging acting skills, solidifying his reputation as a talented and versatile actor. However, the incident involving Ohini and the reported difficulties on the Batman Forever set painted a complex picture of an artist whose fervor for his craft sometimes overshadowed professional boundaries. During these years, Kilmer had to navigate the demanding and often unforgiving waters of Hollywood. He strove to balance his intense commitment to his roles with the practical aspects of collaborating in the film industry. His experiences during this time serve as a reminder of the fine line actors tread between maintaining their artistic integrity and their relationships within the film industry and the wider public eye. Kilmer's talents as an actor were indisputable, but his growing reputation for being difficult on set cast a shadow over his career. His behavior during the filming of The Saint in 1997 added to this narrative. Rumors swirled that he had requested crew members avoid eye contact with him, a story that, whether factual or not, fed into the image of him as a challenging personality. His interactions with directors also became tense. John Frankenheimer, who directed The Island of Dr. Moreau, went on record saying he wouldn't work with Kilmer again, likening the experience to a grueling trek up a mountain. Kilmer's method of engaging with his work, though perhaps rooted in a deep passion for his craft, appeared to be causing friction with his co-workers. In his autobiography, I'm Your Huckleberry, Kilmer tried to clarify his actions. He explained that his conduct was intended to encourage directors, actors and other team members to remain faithful to the core of their projects. However, this approach, he acknowledged, led to perceptions of him being troublesome and strained his relationships with key figures in the major film studios. Kilmer's life away from the movie sets was equally filled with controversy. He bought a vast 6,000-acre ranch in New Mexico, seeking to create a personal haven. This venture, however, led to disputes with his neighbors. Kilmer made comments about the region surrounding his ranch, dubbing it the homicide capital of the Southwest, and making critical remarks about the local community's drinking habits. These comments were poorly received by the locals. More disputes emerged following an interview Kilmer gave to Esquire magazine. In 2005, Kilmer's remarks in an Esquire interview regarding Vietnam veterans stirred controversy. These comments sparked strong reactions from his neighbors, leading some to attempt to obstruct his plans for a bed and breakfast on his ranch. The intensity of the local response was such that the New Mexico ACLU stepped in, offering representation to Kilmer, highlighting the severity of the situation. Kilmer's ranch wasn't merely a backdrop for disputes, it held a special place in his heart. It was here in 1988 that he proposed to his ex-wife Joanne Whaley. However, the financial crisis of 2008 severely impacted Kilmer's finances. Struggling with overdue taxes, he found himself compelled to sell a large portion of his cherished ranch in 2009, originally pricing it at $33 million. The economic downturn forced him to eventually sell it for $18.5 million to a Texas oil executive in 2011, significantly lower than his initial asking price. 
The ups and downs of Kilmer's life during this phase illustrate a man dealing with the repercussions of his choices and conduct. His exceptional acting abilities were often eclipsed by actions that estranged his colleagues and associates. His move to New Mexico might have been a search for peace away from the public glare, but it too became entangled in conflict and financial burdens. Kilmer's narrative in these years is one of success and controversy, personal trials and enduring perseverance, showcasing the complexities of a public figure's life. Val Kilmer's journey encountered another dramatic shift as he faced a serious health issue. In a conversation with the New York Times, Kilmer shared a poignant moment of reflection. Kilmer's vulnerability was palpable when he shared about losing his home during the financial crisis, a plight he acknowledged was shared by countless others. It was a time that laid bare his financial and emotional challenges. In 2014, Kilmer faced a daunting health challenge. He began experiencing trouble with swallowing, a symptom that quickly escalated into a more severe condition. During a stay at Cher's guest house, he encountered a terrifying moment when he awoke to find himself coughing up blood. This alarming incident led him to seek medical help where he was diagnosed with throat cancer. Kilmer's deep-rooted beliefs in Christian science, which focuses on prayer and spiritual healing, brought him to a crossroads regarding his treatment options. At this critical juncture, Kilmer's children played a crucial role. They urged their father, torn between his religious convictions and the pressing need for medical care, to opt for conventional treatment. Their earnest pleas were a significant factor in Kilmer's decision, leading him to ultimately respect their wishes and proceed with medical intervention. He underwent a throat surgery in 2014, followed by a course of chemotherapy and radiation therapy. The consequences of the surgery on Kilmer's health were significant. He was left with a tracheostomy tube and a feeding tube, and he suffered from marked shortness of breath. His once robust and rich baritone voice was transformed into a faint whisper, changing a key aspect of his identity as an actor. Adding to his challenges, Kilmer's daughter Mercedes was involved in a severe car accident that resulted in a major injury, leaving a noticeable scar on her leg. In a twist of fate, she found herself hospitalized at the same time as her father. During this difficult phase, Kilmer's son, Jack, bore the emotional weight of caring for both his sister and father. Kilmer, who generally kept his personal life away from the media, had hoped to keep his cancer struggle private. However, in 2016, Michael Douglas, his former co-star in The Ghost and the Darkness, unintentionally brought Kilmer's health issues into the spotlight with a public comment. Kilmer took to Facebook to address this, acknowledging Douglas's concern but correcting the assertions about his condition. This series of events marked a turbulent chapter in Kilmer's life as he faced the challenges of a serious illness and family responsibilities compounded by the unintentional public exposure of his private struggles. His fortitude during these times reveals a man deeply devoted to his family and personal convictions, even as he faced significant life-altering decisions and situations. The path through his health battle, along with his children's challenges, illustrates a family's unity in the face of adversity, demonstrating both strength and vulnerability. Val Kilmer's life, significantly shaped by his fight against throat cancer, represents a narrative of resilience and healing. Initially, Kilmer was reluctant to share his diagnosis publicly. In a conversation with the New York Times, when questioned about his previous denials, he offered a thoughtful analogy, comparing it to someone who had once broken a bone but no longer sees it as a current issue. This perspective on discussing his health reflects Kilmer's private nature and possibly his wish to keep control over his personal story. By April 2020, Kilmer's approach had changed. He appeared on Good Morning America, candidly speaking about his battle with throat cancer. Despite the seriousness of this admission, Kilmer presented himself with composure, emphasizing the progress of his recovery. On the show, he remarked with a touch of optimism, I feel a lot better than I sound, showcasing his positive outlook and resilience.
Kilmer's private life, especially his romantic relationships, has also captured public attention. In the mid-90s, his marriage to Joanne Wally began to unravel, reaching a climax when Kilmer found out about their divorce through a CNN news report. This incident underscored the peculiar challenges faced by celebrities, where private matters often spill into the public domain. Post-divorce, Kilmer's name was linked with several well-known women in the entertainment industry, including Daryl Hannah, Cindy Crawford, and Angelina Jolie. An amusing story from his autobiography recounts a chance meeting with Cher at a Manhattan eatery in 1981, where he was surprised by her interest in him. Cher, in a 1984 People magazine interview, referred to Kilmer as terrific, but also noted his tendency to be too intense. Despite these previous relationships, Kilmer's current lifestyle is more reclusive. Following his separation from Whaley, he has kept his dating life away from the public eye. He now lives on a smaller portion of his ranch in New Mexico, a significant downscale from the vast property he once had. This transition mirrors the shifts in Kilmer's personal and professional life over time. Kilmer's experiences with his health issues, his interactions in both public and private spheres, and the changes in his career path in Hollywood offer a nuanced portrait of his life's journey. Kilmer's narrative reveals a man who has known the pinnacles of stardom as well as deep personal struggles. His life story is woven with threads of talent, perseverance and adaptability, featuring both great successes and significant obstacles. As he continues to journey through life, both in the limelight and away from it, Kilmer's experiences provide insight into the complexities of leading a life in the public eye, balancing personal health and relationships with his public image. In his autobiography, Kilmer offers an honest look into his private life, unveiling a touching truth about his sense of isolation. He reveals that he hasn't been in a romantic relationship for nearly 20 years, highlighting the solitude that characterizes his day-to-day -day existence. This revelation presents a more vulnerable aspect of Kilmer, a side often overshadowed by the typical glitz associated with Hollywood life. Kilmer's struggle with throat cancer and the ensuing treatments have profoundly impacted his life, especially his distinctive voice. Once celebrated for his wide range of vocal abilities and impressions, Kilmer ascribes the change in his voice more to the effects of radiation and chemotherapy than to the cancer itself. In a discussion with the New York Times, he expressed sorrow over the loss of his vocal talents, which were a fundamental part of his artistic identity. Reflecting on his career and personal life, Kilmer acknowledges the errors he made and the relationships he may have strained. He contemplates concepts of personal redemption and morality, recognizing that his actions, whether deliberate or not, might have caused harm to others. This reflection shows a man coming to grips with his past and striving to understand his life's path through both professional and personal lenses. In an unexpected development, Kilmer's dynamic with Tom Cruise, his former co-star from Top Gun, has notably changed over time. Originally marked by a certain level of tension, their relationship transformed into one of friendship during the production of the sequel, Top Gun Maverick. This shift highlights a softening in Kilmer and an evolving appreciation for past collaborators as he navigates his later career. Celebrating his 60th birthday in 2019, Kilmer shared a positive outlook on his health and future prospects. Despite facing significant hurdles during his cancer treatment, he exhibited an undaunted spirit, deeply rooted in his faith. Kilmer views the concept of death not as a cessation, but as a transition, an idea that mirrors his spiritual perspective on life and existence. Kilmer's life story, as depicted in his memoir and various interviews, weaves together threads of immense talent, personal battles, deep self-reflection, and a journey towards redemption. From his celebrated acting roles and his unique vocal abilities to his fight with cancer and experiences of solitude, Kilmer's life narrative encapsulates the multifaceted nature of human existence. 
His story extends beyond that of a famed actor to encompass a man confronting universal aspects of health, relationships and spiritual exploration. As he continues to ponder over his life and career, Kilmer's story sheds light on the intricacies of living in the public gaze while managing personal challenges. What do you think of Val Kilmer? Leave a comment and let us know. Make sure to also subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more updates.